Morning, everybody, and welcome to another session. There we should go. All right, you've got me on video now. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Zoom training session with Lux Power. I'm your host, Andy, and today we're going to be doing the hybrid, the 3.6, the three, sorry, the 3.3, the three to six kilowatt. What we're doing specifically, we're doing the Gen, uh, the Gen two, or the Gen two, but the Gen six. Um, so for those of you who are joining us uh, from uh, all around Africa, I see we've got some participants coming in from Europe as well. Uh, welcome to everyone. Um, and today the training will focus specifically on the new uh, LXP6, which is the Gen 6. And the reason we call it the Gen 6 is because it has a dedicated generator input as opposed to the older machine, which did not have that. Um, but before we get started and while we wait for participants to come in, I just want to remind you guys that um, uh, all of our machines from the SNA 6000 upwards uh, that are equipped with external CT or current transducer clamps uh, can be used uh, as grid tied solutions. We've had a few of those questions last week um, where you can use the inverter without a battery. In other words, uh, you might have uh, quotes that you are waiting to uh, be accepted. And these are price sensitive quotes where customers uh, you know, are kind of price sensitive to the cost of installation. You can do an installation without batteries to start uh, where you run, uh, you, you run the setup as uh, a grid tied solution where you run without battery. It's a very cheap installation because you're not splitting the client's DB. You're purely going to put in one line, one AC supply from the mains breaker to the inverter uh, with the 32 or 40 or 50 or 63 amp breaker, depending on what size inverter you're using. Uh, in the settings, you're going to set it as run uh, without battery. And then you can sit, you can fit the uh, requisite number of solar panels that you require for that. And essentially what the machine will then do is um, it's going to work as a grid tied machine that when there is solar, it will harvest solar and it will feed the solar back to the DB without exporting it. So you can fit the CT above the, the grid breaker uh, and you can disable export to grid, but it will then use all of the harvested solar or the loads, or alternatively, if your municipality or your grid power supplier allows you or you're registered for export to grid, then you can enable that function. And then simply what the machine will do is it will supply the load first, and then thereafter it will go to export the balance. Okay, so I just want to remind you guys from our SNA 6000, uh, the, uh, the new gen um, machines, the, 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 which comes up in the 6, the 7, and the 8, and then we also have our 10 and our 12. And then uh, I'm, just before we end off today's session, I'm going to talk to you about what, what uh, products we have in our range as well, just to give you a reminder of what we do have. So let's get started on today's training. All right, so today we're going to be looking at the, uh, the hybrid, the three to six kilowatt hybrid inverter series. Now, this first slide that we're looking at here is, it's the old LXP5, right? So this machine, uh, was launched in 2018. We brought it to South Africa in uh, 2018. And this particular screen that you see here is uh, a screen grab of the very first machine that we installed in the country uh, with a full solar system. Uh, when it says full solar array, and you can see as of, I think it was a couple of months ago, we had already hit the 40 megawatt uh, hour uh, harvesting. So, um, and this particular machine has been, uh, you know, it's, it's, it was installed uh, in, I think it was in December 2018, but the panels were only installed in March of 2019. Uh, so from March 2019 until now, it's already uh, exceeded. I think the last time I think it was at 43 megawatt hours, uh, and it's still the original machine. It's out of warranty now, um, but it has racked up a massive amount of mileage and still going strong, So, um, which gives a little, it, it lends a lot of credibility to the brand, especially to the LXP uh, range, because it you know it shows you how durable these machines are. There are a lot of very good machines on the market at the moment, uh, and Lux Power has certainly worked their way up into one of the top uh, brands in the country. Okay, so as you can see, it's we you know we committed to innovation and sustainable development, um, and now we're introducing our second version, Gen Five and Gen Six, which will be launched in South Africa. Um, uh, by next month, we should we already have our first test units here. 
but by next month we should have stock available in the country okay so the new upgrade model if you have a look at the face of it you'll see that it differs vastly from the older machine remember the old lxp5 had the screen in the corner here the large. new machine has yeah. the, the new machine has the uh has the uh, screen moved up to the center Let's have a look at the, the fresh experience, right? So the spec is stronger. We now have a new working uh, mode with three panels where we can run them up to 17 amps. Uh, and we can all, we've can we also enlarged the discharge uh, and charge current. Remember on the old five, we were limited to 66 amps. But now, and then with the upgrade, it went to 80. But now with the new machine, we can charge and discharge to a current of 120 amps in DC. Our function modes are more flexible. At the bottom here, where I'm pointing the arrow now, you can see there's a little port there, and I'm going to show you a little bit later on in the de demonstration or the, the presentation. I'll show you what the bottom of the machine looks like, but it's now equipped with a unique generator interface. Right, and this generator interface we can use as our smart port coupling or smart load coupling. Uh, it allows us for either AC coupling mode, where we're using the inverter with an existing uh, grid tied inverter. So you can put an AC feed into there from a grid tied inverter. Um, you can use it as a generator interface, or you can use it as an auxiliary output. In other words, where you can have two outputs, you can have uh, your EPS out, and you can put out power on the import uh, by using it as a smart load port. And we'll go into that a little bit later um, with um, the description of that. Okay, And that's the intelligent load management that we've got there. The in and this innovation is obviously designed to meet the ever-growing demand of users. The user interface on the new screen is a lot more friendlier than what the old one was. Remember, the old one was just a two-line output. It looked like a Nokia 2110. Uh, but this one is certainly a little bit of an upgrade. Um, I don't know. When you look at the, the graphics on there, it's more like Mario Brothers. But um, it's certainly a lot better because the, the graphics gives you a detailed picture of exactly what the machine is doing. All right, so let's have a look at the contents of today's training. Uh, today, we're going to have a look at the features and applications, the installation, and obviously the working modes. Um, oh, sorry, I, before I go ahead, I just want to encourage you guys, if you've got any questions, I've muted all of the participants today, but if you've got any questions, please type the questions in the chat. And uh, the last five or 10 minutes of today's training, I will use to go through all the questions and answers, and then we can uh, discuss that uh, at the end of the session. All right. Let's have a look at the features and applications. Um, right, so first of all, if you have a look at the design of the machine, it looks very, very similar to the old machine. Uh, just that we've moved the screen to the center here, and then obviously we have a ventilation port on the side, which is very similar to the old one. Right, so let's unleash the uh, features of the new one. So it's got an all-in-one MPPT charger and inverter. Uh, just like the old LXP, it's got, the, it's got two inputs. Um, and the inputs are uh, four kilowatts each. Uh, so it's two MPPT string inputs. Uh, it can work with, it's a low voltage uh, inverter. So it works with either a 48 volt nominal voltage battery or 51.2. But remember that these are just the nominal voltages. Okay, so we will still work, our working range is still between, uh, I think it is 40 volts and 58 volts on the DC side, but we can go through that in the, in the spec sheet. Um, it has an integrated EPS function. On and off grid switching is seamless. When we say seamless, we mean 10 milliseconds or 11 milliseconds, depending on the load. Uh, because you, um, with with when you, when switching from on grid to off grid mode, there will always be a gap in the in 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 the feed, and uh, and that's purely because we have to match the uh, sine wave. It has an integrated generator connection, which the old LXP5 did not have. It's got a smart generator control, which means it's got the dry contact support ting, uh, the dry contact port, which supports uh, switching of uh, generators that have got an auto start function. Uh, we can certainly stop and start generators using that. The old LXP5 needed an external module for that, but the new one, we've got that built in. It's got the smart load control, which means that you can either use your generator port as a gen port, you can use it as an AC coupling port, or you can use it as an as an auxiliary output. And then obviously the AC coupling function we've spoken to you about, right? The applicable for, it's, it's applicable for self-consumption, AC charge, PV charge, and force discharge. Force discharge we use particularly in Europe. It's for our European customers where they have the ability to sell power back to the grid. 
and you want to be able to sell stored battery power back to the grid. We do we use that in the US as well, uh, where they have uh, net energy metering. So customers are buying power uh, without solar panels. They buy power at a cheap rate. Uh, they store it in the batteries, and when the grid uh, when the grid rates are at a much higher uh, uh, charge, they sell that stored power from the batteries back to the grid. Okay, and that's called net energy metering. We don't we don't have that feature in South Africa at the moment. All right, so with the Lux Power monitoring system, the monitoring system looks exactly the same as uh, with the, all of the others. Um, and an interesting thing to note is that we will be launching a new user interface in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so we have Wi-Fi, wi we have GPRS and LAN uh, remote monitoring. Uh, where you can do firmware updates, it supports the website, and obviously uh, the app is available on the App Store as well as the Google Play Store. Right, so you have battery module uh, level monitoring with the Hanar battery, very unique. Um, and uh, many of you guys are, are using the Hanar battery already. And also, you will note that uh, in the in the near future, and certainly with our new brochure, um, you will see that the, the batteries are now being branded with uh, the Lux Power brand as well, because we've had that request from the market. Um, you have optimized charge and discharge function, one press quick charging, which you guys are very familiar with, and also the one press quick start for the generator. And uh, another cool feature that we have on, on the screen um, feature as well is where you can do your generator exercising. In other words, especially now when we don't have load shedding in the country and you've got a generator that's connected, you can use the web monitoring to remotely start the generator and exercise it for a, a specific time or a specified time that you've arranged. Okay, so let's have a look at the working modes, right? So, and the, the working modes that we have here, we can we can have solar and battery system, where you have the typical installation where you have uh, your battery, you've got the UPS output loads, uh, which is your essential loads, your non-essential loads in the grid. And in this particular setup here, you've got a generator that uh, is input either with um, not a generator, but you've got a, an AC coupled inverter as an input, and it's coming in on the gen uh, side. So this is a, a, a typical installation where you've got an existing client or an account who has an existing grid type solution, and now they want to add a hybrid inverter with a battery backup. Then you can use import to take the AC feed from uh, the uh, existing grid client solution. And you must remember that the Gen 6 also has what's called frequency shifting, which means that it can control the function of the existing grid client inverter where it can power it on and slow it down, slow down the, the um, uh, solar harvesting and shut it down uh, using frequency shifting. And then we have an on-grid system where we have no battery here. Remember I spoke about this a little bit earlier, all of our models can support this from the SNA 6000 onwards, where you have an inverter, you have your solar panels, and then you have the grid and the load. And the nice thing about this installation here is how cheap it is. Number one, you're taking away about 35% of the cost of your installation with no batteries. You have the grid supply coming in, you have one feed going into the inverter. So there's one feed in and out. That's you're not splitting the DB. There's no extra additional cost for trunking and cabling. It's one line in with a circuit breaker. And then from there, you're teeing off to your loads through the, the standard um, uh, DB board. And essentially what happens here is at sunrise, the inverter will harvest solar power and feed the power to the load. And if you are equipped or you're licensed to supply power back to the grid, then it will obviously supply the load first and the excess power can be sold to the grid if you are registered for small scale energy generation. So that's a unique feature that we have. A lot of the other manufacturers have it as well, but I want to bring it to your attention. You can go back to your old quotes, especially for customers who have been uh, sort of hovering about whether they should lay out the cash. They can do it now, it's much cheaper. Um, obviously the, the system will only be profitable during sunrise or sunlight hours. Uh, but it's certainly a way that you can explain to your clients that they can start saving up for a battery. Obviously, a solution with a battery for storing excess solar and then using the power at night will be thankful. It's the ideal way to go. And, and you know, some of our, our, our uh, working 
um, calculations have worked out that in a typical installation, you can pay off your installation in about three years. All right. And then obviously uh, with battery and PV, you can have an off-grid and a backup application. Some of you have got total off-grid situations and some of you have got, uh, obviously you, you know, the system is prepared for either grid outage or the dreaded load setting. All right. So um, let's just go back to what's happened to my presentation. There we go. So let's have a look and see the specifications. Right. Power for the inverter is 6 kVA or 6 kilowatts. The 6 kVA and 6 kilowatts here, we're working with a power factor of 1. Uh, but obviously, we have a 0 0.8 and 0 0 0.8 leading and 0.8 lagging uh, certification with our power factor. So we can operate in that spread. Uh, it has an integrated uh, input MPPT with the solar charge controllers. So we can, the, our DC um, function on the DC input is from 100 volts starting to 550 volts DC. Now the 550, remember that that is the rated power or the rated voltage of the MPPT on a unloaded or uh, voltage. So if you are going to run uh, with the, with your PV connected and this, uh, with a closed circuit, we're obviously looking for a voltage lower than that. I think the rated voltage is 480 volts. Current max or I max maximum current input short circuit current will be 17 amps, uh, and we can take four kilowatts on each string with a maximum kilowatt input of eight kilowatts. We do allow for over uh, or excess um, exceeding that, but um, this needs to be the operating function here. We have a lot of customers that ask us, but um, how come your inverter is a six kilowatt inverter, but you can connect eight kilowatt PV? Well, it's quite easy. Uh, first of all, you must remember that solar panels are not 100% efficient. So we factor in the efficiency. But the other cool feature is that the, the LXP6, the Gen 6, plus all of our other machines, they have a dedicated DC charger, which means that you can, if you have eight kilowatts of solar uh, installed, you can invert six kilowatts to load. And if, there, if the battery requires charging, the additional PV power that you've got installed will be, in, will be used to charge the battery. So that's where the additional uh, PV power will be used. Um, the new one ha now has 120 amp charge and discharge current, the battery. Now, on the older machine, we never had that. Originally, like I said, the old LXP5 was a 66 amp uh, charging and discharging, which limited the machine to 4 kilowatts on EPS output on battery alone at night without uh, PV. But now we can in we've increased it to 120 amps. And how do we do it? It's quite simple. We've added a cooling feature to the um to the, uh, the the back of the machine. So, um, and I'm going to show you that in the next picture. So, we, you know, we have a, a massive heat sink behind the inverter. And we've added two silent fans on there, which are externally mounted. They don't blow air through the machine. They simply cool the heat sink when it is required. And that's how we've been able to increase the 120 amp charge and charge uh, feature. And then our off-grid parallel feature, we can parallel up in units in either single phase or three phase uh, configuration. Uh, and uh, especially for, for um, parts that where, you, where you've got uh, quite a big demand. You know, right in the beginning before uh, Lux Power produced um, the 20 kilowatt three phase machine, we did an installation in uh, South Africa in Durban where we built a 40 kilowatt system with eight. Uh, eight five kilowatt LXPs, and that system is still running. As a matter of fact, um, if I get a chance a little bit later, I'll show you it's already clocked over 100 megawatts uh, of, um, of uh, production and still going strong five years later, all right? Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, the design or the, the topography of the machine, the external topography of the machine. Okay, so here on this particular picture, you'll see the underside of two machines. On the right-hand side here, we have our old LXP, three to six kilowatt. Our customers in the UK, you guys are familiar with this machine because you, a lot of you have installed the three uh, and the the five and the six. Uh, the six kilowatt in the old machine came out in a high voltage uh, version, which I think we have a very few, a handful of them in South Africa. 
But our most popular machine on the LXP that we sold in South Africa was the five kilowatt LXP. And this is essentially what the underside of the machine looks like. You've got your grid port there, uh, your UPS, and then this was your communication cable port that went in here, the dongle here. You have a, um, here you have a, um, excuse me, I just need to kill this. Um, here you have your DC to DC switch, sorry, DC uh, switch for your PD, your PD input, and obviously the battery input. So if you go to, can everybody still hear me? Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me on the on the volume because I am connected. Good, thank you. Um, and then on the left hand side, you'll see the underside of the new machine. What we notice to be different is that we have now have three ports. And once again, we are using a dedicated uh, connector plug. So these machines, you don't hardwire them in, right? So you're, you, you're going to wire the plugs, and the plugs will connect here. And, and each of these plugs are unique. UPS plug doesn't fit the grid plug, and the gen plug doesn't fit UPS and vice versa. So once you've connected the cabling or you've wired up the plugs, they are dedicated to their ports. There's no mistaking where they go. Then we have our communication cable port uh, for uh, here, uh, next step is the dongle. Once again, the rotary DC switch for your PV. Then here are your two PV inputs. We've just changed the layout as you can see here. And then we've got our battery terminal on this side here. And remember that the battery terminals now are still taking the standard, uh, I think it's a 25 by six uh, battery lug, um, which is suitable for up to 125 and but you can put a 35 mil cable you just have to change the size of the lug the the LXP 6 comes in the top tray it's fully equipped uh it comes with your dongle with the manual with the uh, bolts with allen keys the special tool to wire the cable the, the plugs um and also we we install we include a set of uh, battery cable lugs but those are 25 by eight. So just make sure that if you're going to use 35 mil cable, that you bring your own set of 35 mil cable lugs uh, to site as well as a crimper. And then at the bottom of the machine here, you can also see that uh, our, um, our uh, the topology at the bottom here looks slightly different. On, on, on the old LXP5 here, this box here contained the induction coils. Uh, so it was an aluminium box with uh, induction coils embedded inside there, and then they were filled with a, with a resin. Yeah, we've split them, as you can see. So we've got a coil inside there, and it's got cooling fins on it, as well as this one here, which is, you know, they don't cost now. They look much better. And also, they, they are, uh, the features of, uh, the, the functional feature is a lot better for cooling. And then in the background, you'll be able to see the fins, the cooling fins of the heat sink, which is mounted vertically to the back of the machine. Here at the bottom here, you can also see the, the heat sink sticking out. This old machine never had cooling fans. The new one has got two fans. There you can see one fan sticking out there, and there's another one there. And those fans are what allow us to cool down the heat sink so that the machine can now charge and discharge up to 120 amps DC. Okay, so let's have a look at the, um, the oh, we've got a little video playing here. It's pretty cool. So this is the old, uh, the old um, uh, LXP5. You can see that you've got your PV here, you've got the battery, you've got your load, your uh, municipal supply via the CT, and there was no generator port here, right? There was no generator port at all. With the new LXP6 uh, or the Gen 6, you can see that we now can put in our generator or we can put in an optional uh, AC coupled inverter via the Gen port. Um, and obviously you still have, still have the PV, the battery, and you have your two loads there. There is a load uh, icon missing here for your your, um, your non-essentials, which should come off, tap off exactly the same here. But that's the cool feature about the new machine is obviously the, the new design layout as well as the optional, uh, I mean, the included input, which you can use either, either as a generator input or as an AC couple input, or you can use it as a auxiliary output, okay?
and allow this to play through. Yeah, you can just see the uh, infographic is running through. Okay, so those are the operating modes. Right, let's have a look at the screen layout. So this this is the screen layout. Remember early on, I just joked about the fact that it looked very uh, Mario Brothers-like. Um, so we've gone away from that uh, old two-line uh, uh, screen layout of the, uh, you know, we just gave the top line, gave you your information, um, and the bottom line gave you the data values. Now we have a, screen, a new display that looks like this. Um, it's screen so you'll be able to up, you'll be able to move between uh, home the data notice and settings but also this is pretty cool here because on a one view layout you can see the pv coming in you can see the battery with charging or discharging you can see the grid um, and obviously if you have a generator connected then this will change to a generator icon as well this is your eps output here and this is your load output which is pretty cool Okay, um, you can also on the data page, you'll be able to see specific data on what the PV is doing, uh, you know, what the PV voltage is and what the power output is. And you can also see your PV, uh, consum not consumption, but the PV harvesting for the day, as well as the total PV harvesting okay, on both PV1 and PV2. Um, on the notice page, you can see your fault status, you can see the alarm status, and you can see the alarm record. And then obviously on the setting page, it's a lot more uh, user-friendly because now you can see all the common settings, the application settings and the grid settings simply by paging through all of this. So even if you're going to set, do the setup remotely um, and you don't want to local connect or you don't want to use your uh, mobile uh, app or uh, web connect, you can, uh, I think this is a longer way around, but you can do it this way as well. All right, so let's look at the topology of the machine, the internal design of the machine. Uh, this is just a very basic layout. So here we have obviously the grid supply, we've got the loads. Your grid comes in through the grid breaker. And here in particular, you'll see that they've used the three-phase supply. All right, so in a three-phase supply, you're simply, simply going to take the neutral and you're going to take one of the phases and obviously the earth coming in, it goes through a grid breaker. Um, this region here, here you have your bypass switch. So in other words, when the machine is running in bypass, then it, the power will come straight from grid via the bypass and out through the EPS to the load. Or if you're going to be using the, AC, the DC to AC inverter or rectifier, then it'll obviously go through here. And the reason it goes through here is so that it can charge the batteries. And simultaneously, it can also take power from your PV, coming through the PV breakers, through the DC to DC boost buck and coming through the rectifier and then out where it gets converted from DC to AC, it comes in, comes out on the EPS side, as well as if you are exporting to your load, your, your non-essential side, then you must remember that your non-essential power will come out through here and it will go to the non-essential loads before getting exported to grid. And obviously, if you do not want to export to grid, then you're going to have your CT connected here somewhere. Then you have the generator input or your AC coupled inverter input here. It will go in and do exactly the same thing, either charge the batteries or go to EPS and export to grid. Right, so on the underside of the machine, uh, we have a connection port for the CT. And I have to uh, uh, encourage you and, and not encourage, but I have to specify that it's important that you fit the CT. Then all of our LXP machines and the new SNA 6000 comes with the CT meter, but on the LXP range, it's critical that you install the CT meter. Why? Because the import and export metering and load calculation is done from the reading of the current transducer. The self-consumption mode is also calculated from the input that we get here. If we select uh, zero export, then we need the CT connected on the grid side so that we can export um, excess PV to the non-essential side. And we can also import, we can limit the import power from the grid. Okay, so it's very, very important. On our CT, you will see there's an arrow. It's direction uh, um, uh, points from the grid to the inverter. 
Uh, and if you've installed it incorrectly, we have included on our maintenance page, we've included a little tab where you can flip the uh, direction of the CT simply by clicking or enabling or disabling that button. Okay, so on, on all of our LXP machines, very important, you have to use the CT meter. Um, underneath here, you can see that we have a number of ports. So there you have your drive contact for uh, the uh, generator. This blue uh, dip switch here is for the paralleling function. And many of you are familiar with it. Um, if you're using two machines, then both switches on both machines have to be in the on position. Uh, and if you're using more than two, then you're going to use, then obviously it's the one, the first and the last machine, these dips will be on. The middle machines, the dips will all be off. This particular dip switch here, with five dips on it, we use it for regional setting. So for South Africa, we will have dip number one on <laughs> and all the others off. And then we are going to enable on the maintenance page, we're going to enable the grid regulation to South Africa, which will then implement the pre-programmed NRS certificate, um, the NRS and SANS code <coughs> that we programmed into the machine. It will activate that. Okay, DRM, we don't use it in this country, but DRM stands for Demand Response uh, uh, Management. And that's when the government takes control of your inverter and they will be able to uh, take power out of the batteries and dump it into the grid. It's uh, a popular feature in Australia. And uh, so this demand response management is what uh, this feature is there for. Four, eight, five, and 10 is obviously for the battery. And then this is your parallel port for your paralleling. All right. Okay, so here we have a an overview of how we expect you to do uh, your installation. So from your grid, you're going to come through your mains breaker. You're going to go through the meter. Here is your earth bar. Um, and then from there, you're going to have your non-essential loads. And you're going to have your EPS loads here. Uh, and then obviously the CT needs to go on as well. But this, this particular diagram just shows you where you can connect a meter. And remember that our our um, uh, LXP can either use a TT or it can use a, a we can accept a, a digital meter. Uh, you simply just on the maintenance side, you simply have to um, no, select which meter you're using, whether it's an Eastron, whatever it may be, but you can opt up, use a meter instead of a CT. This is an installation as opposed to the previous one where we are using meter, a, a digital meter. Um, and then the CT only goes on the live incoming from grid. And remember that it is direct specific. Okay, so if you, it's got an arrow on it, there you can see the arrow and the arrow will is specific to how it has to be installed. And the flow is always from uh, the grid to uh, the inverter. You can use a three-phase meter as a single-phase meter or to utilize or utilize it to balance the load across all three phases. And this is obviously in a three-phase installation. All right. Um, the, the, meet, the, the CT that we supply with our inverters is uh, the, the sampling ratio is one in 1,000 um, or 1,000 to one. Um, we can use either 1,000 to one or 3,000 to one sampling uh, CT. If you are going to use your own CTs, especially for those of you who are installing CTs at a much further distance away from uh, where you expect the inverter installation to be and you want to use a 3000 to 1 CT, you can use it. You simply just have to change the sampling ratio on the settings page, on the maintenance page. Okay, uh, we've had a look at this a little bit earlier, but here we have the battery communication port. Remember, there's your battery communication port there and it goes from the battery on your CAN, all right? So we can use 485 or CAN. Um, our communication is uh, on our inverters, which is standard across our range. On pin number one, we use 485B. Pin number two, we use 485A. Three is uh, vacant or, or uh, not used. And four and five, we use for CAN high and CAN low. Um, that's a standard across all our inverters. And uh, so depending on which communication protocol you're going to use, you'll still use the same cable, but you, but if it's RS485, you'll use pin one and pin two, and if it's uh, CAN, uh, CAN bus, you can use pin four and five. All right, so battery communication is only available for compatible lithium batteries. 
We have an extensive range of battery manufacturers that we work with. Um, and all of the, the common brands are uh, utilized. We do get requests on a daily basis and asking, they come up with some really weird names. Uh, you know, is Lux Power working with this brand? Uh, we, we're not going to extend the range of our, our um, battery manufacturer list as it stands because it's quite extensive at the moment. So the onus will then be on you. If it's if we do not already have a working relationship with the manufacturer, the onus is on you as the installer to either use it in lead acid mode or you can speak to your manufacturer, the battery supplier, and maybe they're using a protocol that's already functional on our list, like Pylon, for instance, which is a very popular one. Okay, And we, we can only use RS485 and CAN bus pins or protocols for communication. All right, so uh, here we have our communication uh, while monitoring platform. Um, as mentioned earlier on, we use uh, both Android and Apple. Uh, we have an app uh, and we update the app regularly, uh, at least two or three times a year. And at the bottom of the app here, you'll always be able to see the firmware version. So if you're not sure whether you're running the right version, you can always check and see if it's the right one. Um, and this is the login portal face uh, that you can see here. And guys, I just want to re remind you of these buttons that we've got at the bottom here, okay? Remember that, that most of you select remember me and the auto login uh, so that when you select the app, it automatically logs into your stations. But remember that when you log out, it will bring you to this page. And we've got these uh, six buttons at the bottom here a functional button. The first one is the register button. So when you're building a station, always register your station from here. You can do it from within the app, but it's the long way around. I always recommend, I, you know, I make a joke about it. There may be 50 ways to leave your lover, but there's only two ways to register a station. It's either from this point here or that point there on the on the web portal. It's very easy. Once you have your installer code, you simply you know, click here, it's going to take you to a register page. You create a username for your customer. You create a password. You populate the rest of the page. And right at the bottom, you're going to put in three things. The dongle, uh, serial number, and PIN, and your customer code. Once you do that, it creates a new station. It gives the end user a unique username and password to log in. And it also ties that station through your installer account to your distributor account to us. Okay, the dongle connect button, all of you know how to use this. This is how you're going to connect the dongle to the Wi-Fi. Um, and it's a pretty easy uh, feature to use. If you don't come right there, then it simply means that either there might be a Wi-Fi uh, signal strength um, problem. You can also use the, the, the IP address of the dongle, but we don't, you know, that's a, a tricky one to use because a lot of guys start fiddling around in other areas once they're inside the dongle, and then the dongle has to come back for, re, for a reflashing. The other cool feature about this here is um, remember that we have two types of dongles. We've got the TCP dongle, and we also have a Bluetooth dongle. The Bluetooth dongle, a lot of guys feel that it's a lot easier to connect, um, and it's a, it's a different uh, setup, um, but very similar uh, and quite easy to use. And another thing to uh, remember that our dongles are low power dongles. In other words, the, I, I can't remember exactly what the power output of them, but let's just have instance a ten. It's a ten watt power uh, range that they can transmit and receive on between the dongle and the uh, and the Wi Fi. Um, and uh, sometimes we have installers telling us, "Hey, but I'm I'm in." I'm standing right next to the inverter and on my phone, I have a very strong uh, signal because your phone has a much higher transmitter strength than uh, our dongle has. So remember, if your phone picks up a strong signal, doesn't mean that the dongle can see it, okay? Our dongle strengths are limited, uh, 2.4 gigahertz and 5G. I'm sorry, not 5G, only 2.4 gig, uh, 2.4 G um, and low strength. So we can't pass through a number of walls. Okay, so we can, if it's line of sight, it'll be great. But through, you know, from the garage, like some customers have the inverter in the garage and the, and the Wi-Fi is in the bedroom on the other end of the house, won't work. Product warranty, you guys can use this. You simply click it, it'll use the... It will use the camera on your phone and you can scan the, past, the, the the serial number on the side of the inverter. If you scan it, it will register the warranty immediately. 
local connect we do have videos on youtube on how to use that if you are in a site where there is no wi-fi but you want to use your mobile to program the machine you can simply connect your phone to the dongle using the wi-fi connect and then you once your phone is connected to the dongle you go in via local connect and then you can use the app to program the machine and another cool feature as well is you see this firmware download feature here if you have a site that is remote, it's an off-grid site that's got no Wi-Fi whatsoever, but you want to go and do a firmware update. When you're in the office, you simply click download firmware first. You, so you connect to the, to, uh, to, you must be connected to the internet. You download the firmware onto your phone, you travel to site, you local connect, and then you download the firmware onto you, onto the inverter from the mobile phone. Cool feature. Okay. Right, so let's look at the different working modes. So we have uh, our self-consumption mode. Um, here we have, uh, here you can have your default power. The default power-up sequence is always solar inverter, uh, solar battery utility, which is this one here, right? So in this case, the uh, when the generated PV power, um, when the generated PV power surpasses the total needs of the battery charging and load consumption, the surplus power will be exported to grid. Here you can see um, the, the PV is harvesting, it's charging the battery, and it supplies the house load, and there's excess power, it will export the power to grid. You have to, if you don't want this to happen, you have to disable uh, export to grid, right? Second function here, we have when the generated power is not enough, uh, to supply the load, then what will happen is the battery will discharge, both PV will supply and the battery will discharge, and it will go to load, nothing will be exported. And in the third scenario, you have exactly the same as this one. It will discharge the battery and bring in PV, and the extra power that is required will come from the utility. Okay, so these are the three different working modes that you have. You, you can change that where... Um, if you don't want the battery to discharge, in other words, where you just want to go from PV and utility to supply load and, and keep the battery, then you can uh, enable AC charging for 24 hours, or you can enable the uh, the charge priority for 24 hours. Okay, so our default uh, power-up sequence for utility solar battery is like I explained. The power comes in, goes to the load, and also goes through here, and it charges the battery. This is where there's no PV uh, available. Okay, and that's that's for AC charging. You can, however, disable AC charging if you don't want to use your uh, the utility to power power or to charge the batteries. You can disable that feature altogether. Okay, and then in this particular setup here, we've got exactly the same as the previous one, um, where we have the three different working modes, um, where either the PV is sufficiently charging the battery, exporting and supplying the load or it's just charging the battery here. And the so PV only charges the battery and utility supplies the load. Or alternatively, you don't use the battery at all. You use PV to run and charge, I mean, to charge to uh, buy the house loads and any excess power will come in from utility. And that that is the PV, the PV charge priority. So in other words, where you don't want to uh, use the battery at all. So we can disable um, in other words, where the battery is just kept for, for uh, backup uh, completely. Uh, after enabled force after enabled force discharge function, the battery will prioritize charging its power to supply the loads and sell electricity. Okay, so, so here we can, uh, especially for our European clients, um, you can either buy cheaper power from the utility, store it in the battery, and then once again sell it back to the utility at a higher rate, or alternatively, you can uh, store power in the battery, and uh, when it is required to discharge, you can discharge it. Most of you guys are very familiar with this. Um, I, I must remind you that the force charge feature on the maintenance page is the only time when you can discharge, you can program your inverter to discharge battery power to grid. That's the only time that it will use. Uh, if 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 you disable that feature, then it'll only use PV to discharge the grid. Okay. 
All right, guys, so uh, we've got about 15 minutes left. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the screen sharing that we've got. And we're just going to go through, I want to see if I can stop that. Um, I want to, I'm going to bring up a, this one, this particular one here. Right, guys, so here you can see our, our the, the brochure. This brochure is available to all of you. It's available on PDF. It's quite a big brochure. Uh, but if you need uh, the brochure for your marketing purposes, you're more than welcome to email us. Um, you can reach out to us um, uh, via our website. We Remember, we've got two websites. Uh, the first one, our international website, is www.luxpowertech. So it's Lux Power Tech exactly as you see it here, luxpowertech.com or luxpowertech.co.za. There is a, a company that's operating a, a rogue site called luxpower.co.za. It doesn't belong to us. Uh, it's what you call a uh, cyber camper. It's illegal, and we're taking legal steps against that particular individual. But for now, make sure that when you're looking us up on uh, the web, it's luxpartech.com or luxpartech.co.za. Right, and remember that all of our machines that I'm going to show you here um, are available. Well, most of them are available in South Africa. So on the single phase side, we've got the hybrid series here, which is the, the new Gen 6, the 7 to 10 kilowatt, and the 12. The, these split phase machines here are for the US market and for some of our split phase markets like South America. And then this particular one here, which is the three phase machine, this machine we're bringing out uh, into South Africa. We already have the sample here. We're just waiting for our stack our light store batteries to arrive that we can pair with these and we'll certainly be selling them to uh, the South African market. Then on the single phase side, we have the SNA 3 to 6, which you guys are very, very familiar with. And then these machines here are for the US market. Okay, so um, this is the one killer one that we've been doing today. And remember that from here onwards, all of these machines can be used without battery, okay? It's very important for you to remember that you can use them as grid card solutions. This is our new 7 to 10 kilowatt. We already have the 10 in stock here. We just, uh, we, we're currently testing it at the moment. And we're also looking at bringing in the 8 kilowatt. Um, so if there is a market for it for the 8, then we will have the, the, the phases we will have here is a 6, an 8, a 10, and a 12. Um, this is our European version 12 kilowatt, which you guys are very familiar with at the moment. Um, I'm not going to do that. That's our 10 kilowatt, uh, 10 and 12 for the US market. But this particular one here, which is the 20, it's a 20 kilowatt three phase machine. It's a high voltage <clears throat> DC input. It takes a high voltage battery. And we, we've already got samples in the country. As I mentioned, we're just waiting for the batteries to arrive with our next shipment. And then we will have some samples available for you guys to test. Okay, so that's that's essentially all I wanted to show you. And then uh, right at the end here, um, EcoBeast, we already have sold quite a few of them in the country, um, our test models that came in. And our NRS certification will be completed this week. Um, and I will have the uh, certificates available for those of you who are doing SSEG um, applications for them. Um, they've already passed all the tests. We're just waiting for certificates to be issued. And then here is the light store uh, units where we have the inverter with the battery um, connected. Um, and then um, for many of you who are already using the Hanar range, you'll know, I mean, it's no secret that um, Hanar is owned by Luxpower, but in the future, we will also be launching the Luxpower branded batteries, uh, which are exactly the same thing. We've just changed the screen printing on the front. So we're still going to be having the high five, um, which will now be called the, the Ally five, which stands for lithium five, the power gym, and uh, the power gym pro, which is the fourteen point three kilowatt battery, and then the power stack, which is the high voltage stack. This is the one that will be sold with the twenty. Okay, All right, guys, I'm going to go to the chat. I see there's a few questions that we're going to be asked. Let's just have a look and see what the chat says. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm not getting your audio. I'm hoping that you are got the audio. Audio is fine. This side. Good morning, all. Please change via the link here. So we will be the this this um session. once the recording is complete, Kathy will put the recordings out on YouTube. Uh, you guys know our YouTube channel. Just look for Lux Power Tech on YouTube. In there, we've got quite a few uh, demonstration videos. We also have some um, some learning or teaching videos on there, um, which is uh, quite handy to have. All right, the recordings can be accessed from uh, YouTube, but we will also be we will also make the links available on the chat groups. Okay, I see Kathy has uh, on, responded to that already. Uh, any updates on the firmware fix for the battery overvolting? Yes, we have uh, repaired that. Remember, there was a rollback that we uh, did for uh, the guys who had already gone onto the previous version. That version was taken off. We are currently testing it. At the moment, but if you are still having a battery over voltage problem, you can reach out to our support center. You can call us, take down this number. It's 021-490-5000. That's our office, our support number. You can also reach out to us on the WhatsApp support groups, uh, and we will be able to give you uh, the rollback feature for that. Hands-on training. Yes, we do, do hands-on training. Uh, you can reach out to me personally on uh, WhatsApp or reach out to us on our WhatsApp support groups. We also have Mao Mao. She is the, the, the chief, the leader, uh, the number one uh, for Lux Power South Africa and Africa and Europe. So reach out to her um, and arrange uh, hands-on training. We can either do the training here at our premises or we can come out if you're a distributor. We encourage you to take use of that feature where you book with us. We will come out to your site. We will do training uh, with your team. We can do training with your uh, your onboarding team and other team that do, do sales to your installers. We can also teach your team on how to do how to handle your monitoring and management from a distributor point of view. Uh, and we can also do training with your installers. So please, if you want that, book it with us. We're more than happy to come out and do it. We'd love to. Um, uh, the use case of the LXP six versus the SNA six thousand. The SNA 6000, you must remember that our SNA series is our entry level uh, machines. So, and very soon, uh, probably within January or February next year, we're going to be launching the, the SNA 12. That's right, an SNA 12. So, it's a 12 kilowatt SNA. What's the difference between the LXP and the SNA? The LXP is our luxury brand, um, the SNA is our entry level brand or our entry level uh, model. So, if you have a look at it, the SNA series comes with a three-year warranty. The LXP series comes with a five-year warranty. And if you pair it with a Hynar or a Luxfire battery, you're going to get 10 years warranty on the inverter and 10 years warranty on the battery. If you pair a, an SNA with a Hynar or Luxfire battery, you're going to get three years warranty on the SNA, 10 years on the battery. That's the maximum. The SNA is a mild steel chassis or a mild steel cabinet, which is powder coated. The LXP range is 100% aluminium. The whole machine is built with aluminium and stainless steel. There's no mild steel in it. And also it's an IP65 machine, whereas the SNAs are IP20s. Remember the SNA has got three cooling fans. It draws in air from the outside and it blows it through the machine. So any dust particulates or moisture gets blown inside the machine. We do build, uh, we do factor in what we call tropicalization or we coat the internal boards with a very thick coating of uh, protective layer, but that's what you get with an SNA. With the LXP, the machines are IP65 rated, which means all the internal parts are completely sealed off from the environment. Okay, so that's the difference between our LXP and our SNAs. But functionally, they they, they are pretty much the same. Um, it's just that the, the SNA is a much, uh, look, the, the SNAs do very well uh, on the interior, you know, uh, for South Africa and the drier regions like Bloemfontein and inland, they do very well. We don't really like selling them on the coast because of uh, the, the coastal uh, moisture and corrosion. But inland, they do very well. In Johannesburg, certainly in the high fell, they do very well. But just remember, guys, please, especially for those of you who are living in the high fell, you have to put in protection, uh, AC protection, like uh, AC SPDs, lightning protection, and things like that. Okay. Um, then to answer the question, there was somebody, uh, that wants to know, how does one become a distributor, uh, to become a distributor? It's quite easy. Um, you're going to reach out to Mau Mau. She is on all of our chat groups. 
you can reach out to her, chat to her, and uh, she will she will take that uh, discussion further with you. Any plans on Zoom training on monitoring the web app functions for the Gen 3 to 6? Yes, most definitely. Uh, we do do training. Uh, we're going to try and push out the training um, every week, but we will also be doing updating our YouTube videos on uh, on the the web monitoring. So um, if you already don't have that on the web or on on YouTube, you can certainly um, expect a, a an update from us. Any updates on the back? We've already covered that. All right, guys. So uh, thank you very much. We've got four minutes left. It looks like we've covered all of the questions. I want to thank you all for your participation. It's a good show today. Um, like I said, the, the recording will be available uh, from Kathy. Our marketing department will reach out uh, with a link to the recording. It will either be on YouTube or it will be available as a download. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, and uh, guys, I say this every time to each and every one of you who are installers and distributors and resellers of our product. We want to thank you. Thank you for your support. It's a very tough market that we're operating in, and there are some fantastic brands out there. We know Luxfire is competing with uh, some top-notch brands. Um, we're certainly not the biggest, uh, but we strive to be one of the best. And without your support, we cannot be as good as what we are. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your time. And we look forward to our next training session with you.